Thank you, Speaker. It's really important that we have a genocide education because it is often in the interests of states uh, who perpetrate these acts to deny them, and it, trauma is very, very difficult to speak about. So I want to read into the record some of the stories that were told to me when I did the Mosaic Institute's Perception versus Reality of Imported Conflict in Canada. The first by a Tamil woman who was 34 uh, at the time I spoke to her, came to Canada at 16. One night on Christmas Eve when I was 10, we were at my aunt's house chit-chatting when a bomb fell on the roof of our house. The bomb hit one of the big beams and exploded outward, so we were not killed, but the neighbor who had looked outside when she heard the planes was killed instantly. I have scars on my arm and legs from shrapnel, and my aunt is still carrying shrapnel inside her. My cousin needed a screen graft, and she still can't walk properly. She has poor circulation. For years, I suffered from PTSD. When I cycled to school and heard thunder, I thought it was explosions. At school, I would scream and need to be cuddled, even here, and we had no counselors to provide us with emotional help. The second from uh, a Tamil woman, 23, who came to Canada at two. A lot of houses of people we knew were bombed. My cousins were tortured and captured by the Sri Lankan government, and one of my cousins is still missing. These were my first cousins. At Molivakal, we had family friends end up in the internment camps and survive the end. My immediate family managed to survive, but all of our property was taken. I refrain from reading the news because I deal with individual trauma on a daily basis from a woman who was uh, 30 when she spoke to me and came to Canada at 10. My dad went to a meeting and surrendered his weapons uh, when the van he was in was ambushed. They torpedoed it and killed almost everyone who was in it. There was one survivor who was in the bushes and they thought he was dead, but he saw what happened. One person was chopped up while he was still alive. In my father's case, they poured acid on him to burn his body. We don't know if he was alive when they poured the acid on him, but that meant we had no body to bury. And the fourth, um, my parents uh, dealt with war trauma, but also the trauma of leaving their families and everything behind. Um, my father, was carrying war trauma, but also regrets for leaving his family behind. I noticed that a lot of Tamil dads were emotionally and mentally absent, but trauma drove many to alcoholism, and that was a real problem. These are the stories that people live with, the stories that they continue to hold in their hearts, and it is why we need to educate everybody as to what trauma exists and why it's there. Thank you.